guys. Okay, I'm just going to finish setting up my uh, view here so I can see if anybody's on here with me. And I will um, show you what I'm working on. I finally got the hang of this basket, I think. Okay. So what I did was I started forming this basket on a five-gallon bucket. And please, if anyone is here, please let me know if you can hear me okay. All right, just in the chat on the right-hand side of the screen, just say, hey, I can hear you, or hey, uh, speak up, or whatever. This is my new microphone, and I am wearing it. It's right here. And oh, I can't see what you see. Not yet. Just a second. Okay, here we go. Now I can see what you see. And I hopefully can see the chats too. There we go. Okay, so here's my basket. And um, I figured out this new weave that I didn't know before, but it's almost like my hands had to learn um, how, to, how to do it. I mean, like I had to sleep on it and I had to think about it. And then it finally came to me. Don't start with the three weave because I'm not ready for that yet. Hey, Dave, are you on lunch? <laughs> I always seem to catch you at lunch. So that's great. I'm glad. Um, 20 bucks well spent. Well, I mean, 25. If you include the, I had to get this uh, mic splitter thing too. So anyway, um, I'm adding in a new piece of wicker. And um, the, what I learned was if I could just always do it the same way, I would get an organized pattern. Hmm, seems logical, right? So anyway, um, and I learned that I didn't have to really weave in the end piece. It would just kind of stay there. If I just overlapped it a little, it would stay there. And that makes such a difference because then it starts to look like a real, like a real pattern. And I wanted baskets because, well, you know, I want to learn to make everything and I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. I'm glad you're here. Think about you all the time, Dave. It's amazing what having something that something somebody gave you, you know, in front of you just makes you think of them. So um, I'm always starting with the top one. Oops, I ripped it right out. But it doesn't, I mean, it'll stay just after I get it tucked in. Okay, so the one in the top goes down and behind. So it goes under this, under the, under the other one and behind. And this is like a spoke. I'm going to learn the words for these parts of the basket, but um, I'm gonna have to do that twice to get it. There we go. Okay, so the top one is always pulled down and behind the spoke. I just think they're like spokes in a wheel. So that's why I call them spokes. So what has been going on with you, Dave? So now that, I can't tell, okay, I'm on the screen now for good. So once I get in the habit of just taking the top one, pulling it down, and then behind. Okay, so Princess Parabani one time said, don't you soak your stuff before weaving it? And I thought, well, maybe I need to learn how to weave something. So I started looking it up. And apparently the people who are doing these really beautiful weavings we're using very um, uniform materials, not like my grapevine basket, which was incredibly unruly to deal with. So I ordered myself some, some of this wicker from Amazon. I guess a lot of people probably use it for repairing chairs and things like that. Um, but I thought, okay, here, let's start with a uniform material and I'll see what it's like to use this material. And next time I think I'll buy a maybe a heavier material to weave with. But I mean, I just had to find something to, to try to use and, and then get started. So as you all know, my first basket, it's right here. Let me dump the rock out of it. There's a rock in it. Whoops. Um, it started out normal, but then I got hungry and it turned into like, looked like a, you know, I was on something. It was, it was just hunger, I swear. Okay. Ah, uh, 
you don't, don't send me anything for Christmas. You already sent me your whole house. Uh, we are converting the gold wing into a trike and that's $12,000. Okay, what's a gold wing? Um, sounds like a motorcycle. Sounds really cool. Yeah, no, um, no, please don't. I, I certainly wasn't saying that, but I, I do always think of you when we use the stuff you gave me and I don't need any more stuff. <laughs> so I'm good. We have, we have loads of stuff. However, the thing that I wanted, <laughs> well, one thing that I said, I told, told my husband to get me for Christmas. So y'all, I don't need this from anybody. He's going to get me this probably. Um, I kind of want a drone with a camera on it and they have one at Costco for $99 and I think that would make a great Christmas gift. So I'm at the end of this one. I need to grab another. Woo! Yeah. And then um, I always need raw material. So I mean, uh, one funny thing that I, I like is scraps of cotton fabric, old shirts, you know, stuff like that. That's what I, that's what I use. I don't need new stuff for anything, for any reason. So I just, you know, I just make stuff out of whatever I got lying around. I don't need, don't need gifts. I'm good. I'm good. I got everything I need. Um, the, uh, I'm having a little problem with the chicken, however. Um, if you notice, I'm standing on the place of the front porch where we used to have a potting bench. There used to be a potting bench right here. And that chicken used to lay eggs on the potting bench. And now she's really mad at me fighting with this thing. She's, hey, princess, I was just talking about you. Um, I was talking about how you said, oh, you have to soak your stuff before um, weaving with it. And I thought, Oh, I guess I better learn how to weave properly because I didn't know that. When you told me that, I was like, oh, okay. So, oh, update. Uh, my tongue is still numb, but it's all better. I mean, it's all, it's like doesn't hurt and um, it looks fantastic. And now I like sticking it out. So, <laughs> yes, it's a motorcycle from Honda. It's a big touring bike with, ooh, cool. Okay. So you have my email address, Dave. Send pictures when when it's done or before and after pictures. I always enjoy before and after pictures of basically anything. You know, you paint your cabinets before and after. You, you know, you get a hairdo before and after, a new motorcycle before. I love those. Come on. Doesn't everybody? I mean, it's like, it's like as though you were part of a project, but you didn't have to do anything. You know, <laughs> none of the work was, was yours. Oh, I would like to show you my... Of course, they were the American League champs, but now they were the World Series champs. And that was so freaking exciting. And, um, okay, you know what, guys? I'm just going to tell you. Okay, you're going to be the only ones who know because you're the only ones who actually show up for my stuff. My nephew plays for the Houston Astros, and um, I never tell anybody. But hardly anybody watches my videos, so what difference does it make, right? Anyway, that's why we were so excited for him to have played. I mean, this his life's dream was to play. Uh, ever since he was five, he has been telling my husband he was going to play in the World Series, and then he did. It was so cool. So anyway, I just wanted to, I just wanted to tell you guys that I thought, you know, why not, why not celebrate it? Um, my sister, well. I guess I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say what I, I would, um, I mean, I think it's a lot of people are real tacky about the way that they celebrate, you know, someone else's successes that they know. And, um, it kind of annoys me sometimes, but, um, uh, some people have, have said, you know, why aren't you a Rangers fan? Well, I was, I was a Rangers fan. It's just, I mean, family's really important to me, <laughs> you know, and, and it was just the craziest thing in the whole world to see him up there. And so we're super excited. Anyhow, um, I, I kind of credit him with my inspiration to start a YouTube channel because I thought, gosh, if he can make his life dream come true, like when I watched him get drafted and I said, if I can watch him get his life dream come true, what did he do to get there? 
And what he did was singular focus on, I mean, to me, this is, this is how people become successful. Okay, wait. Can I get inside if I, no, I don't have that sort of thing. Uh, see, that's what, that's what I was afraid of. Maybe I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't get anything. And I, I don't take advantage of people. And that's the, that's the thing, you know, um, I think what they have to fear, you know, when you get, when a person gets very successful, what they have to fear is that other people are only going to want them for what they can get for them, you know, can get from them. And, uh, but the thing that I take away, I mean, the inspiration that I take away from it was, if he can do that, I can do anything. And I said, so I sat down with myself and this was about a year and three or four months ago. I was in my room, I was in bed, which I call meditating. You know, I like to lie down with my eyes closed, not necessarily napping. You know, sometimes that happens by accident, but, um, but hang on a second. I just got to lean off screen for a second. The blow my nose. Sorry about that. I hope I'm not coming down with what my husband uh, has. But like if he, I thought if he could do that, I can do anything. What did I really want to do? And I said, what am I afraid to do? And so I, um, that moment I said, I saw that primitive technology guy and he had built that kiln in his backyard. Or not in his backyard, in his, you know, wherever, he, wherever that guy is. I don't even know where he is. Um, I wasn't talking about football. <laughs> I was talking about the Astros. Um, anyway, uh, wait, terrible connection. What EMPs? Were there EMPs this weekend? Um, I hope it's not my connection. Everybody let me know if my connection's okay. Um, but I thought if he could do that, I can do anything. And I wanted to build, I said, that primitive technology guy built a freaking pottery kiln in his backyard. I said, I've got clay. I can do this. And then I went out and did it. And then I said, I was in my head, you know, I'm like, I'm going to videotape this because if he can videotape it, then I can videotape it. Maybe I can make a video. And that was my first like real YouTube video that I gave any effort to like the editing and all that stuff. I think I did it on my phone which was really hard because my phone has no memory space. I bought the cheapest memory, memory phone anyway. So that is why you know me today because, <laughs> that's great, that's great. Um, yeah, um, which is funny. So remember I went, I went to the uh, horse race with my cousin, speaking of gambling, Michael, I went to the horse race with my cousin, she's a, um, she trains racehorses, and um, also I call her cousin. She's technically not a cousin. She's my cousin's cousin. But anyway, we're we're close. Okay, hang on, hang on. Two large orders of EMPs over here, please. What? Oh, I am not princess. Of course he is. Um, <laughs> yeah, tongue's back in action. Now I can do fun tricks with it. Uh oh, I'm sitting on my wires. I'm all kinds of, I really wish everything in the world was freaking wireless. I mean, why? We can put people, we're like about to put people in Mars and we can't figure out how to get, you know, wireless charging cables, things like mass marketed. I've heard of these things where you can like set your phone on it. Anyway. Oh, yay. It was great. It was like, it was so excited. One night I was so stressed out that I just went to bed. And then um, someone, then my phone started going off and people were texting me like, hey, they, um, you know, they, I guess it had, I think it had tied up three times in a row and somebody started texting me. And so I woke up and, or I said something to my husband. I said, they're texting me. What do you think this is about? And it said something like, you know, yay, Astros and whatever. And I, so we decided to get up and play the game from when we shut it off because we just couldn't handle it. And um, it was amazing. That was the, that was, I don't know. It was like game five or something like that. So many games. Um, but, you know, and I wasn't, I was not a huge sports fan, but this particular, and, and I don't like to go to the stadiums either because I don't like to be around a lot of people. Um, people like 
crowds kind of freak me out. There's noise, so I, so I get overstimulated because, you know, I do. I get overstimulated. And then there's the um, – what would then the what would happen like if you know if we all wanted to get out at the same time that would be a problem we'll all be tripping over each other last time i was in the um the uh what's it called minute maid park um down in houston i got a panic attack so i had to i took some medicine and then there was a party afterwards <laughs> and um I fell asleep during the party. All my relatives were there. Like, well, lots of my relatives were at this party. My nieces and nephews and um, uh, brothers and sisters. And I've got a lot of those, let me tell you. And so, um, can you guys see this thing here? Oh, okay, good. I can't really, hang on. Let me see, can I make this thing smaller? Sometimes I do this, like I'll disappear off the screen. Yeah, you know, crowds. All right, that was good. I could see the whole. There we go. Oh, okay. I can see them on the screen now. And you can, I can see if you can see my basket. How do you like it? Isn't it cute? Okay, I shouldn't have popped that off there. Um, this five gallon bucket is keeping it like really uniform. And it, it just, I can just spin the basket, spin the, uh, well, now I can spin the basket around. When I had a big heavy thing on top of it, kind of holding it down, I was spinning the whole thing, which is kind of a pain. But on here, it makes it really easy to work with. Xanax. You know what? That's what I. That's not how you spell it, I don't think. But uh, yeah, that's what I took, and I fell asleep at the party, and it was it was a little bit embarrassing, but you know, it got me through it. And oops, I made a boo boo right there. Do you ever get to the point where you go, how far back should I correct a, a boo-boo or should I just leave it? Um, I think I'm leaving it. And the reason why is wicker, when the wicker stops being damp enough, it starts to get cracky. And I don't want it to get cracky. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, that's what makes it unique. <laughs> Mistakes. Ah! Put the needle on the record. Put the needle on the record. Put the needle on the record. The drum beat goes like, pump up the volume. Okay, sorry. I'll stop. <laughs> okay. So what's everybody else been up to? This thing, once this started going well, I thought, well, shoot, I'm going to get dressed. and Because I was out here in my jammies, you know, which is a thing I do. Leave it. If you wanted it perfect, you wouldn't want wicker. Right? Thank you. Right. That's what they say. If you wanted a, if you wanted a pic, it, well, if you wanted a perfect representation of a person, take a photo. Right? Not that that's true anymore, because now photos are half paintings. When you look at them in magazines, they're, they're mostly just completely edited up lies anyway, which is great, because who wants, you know, sometimes the truth is, just enough. So did the sun do any solar stuff or was Princess just making that up? Do we have any solar disruptions this week? I didn't notice. Our internet connection is sweet now. I can um, upload while anything else is going on in the house. Oh. Oh, great, Michael. Um, Michael is feeling healthier and getting to walk due to a new, having a new doctor. Yay. Okay. The reason why I'm, I say the, all that out loud is because I know that the, the live chat disappears and then people can't see it later and they wouldn't know what I'm talking about if I say, yay, you know? Yeah. Walking's great. I should be walking. Um, this is remarkably tiring on the arms. Can y'all see this? I can turn the camera a little bit if that helps so you can see that. It's just, you know, this is apparently they when they put people in like a mental hospital, they'll teach them basket weaving. And at first I thought, why would they do this? It's so frustrating. I'm going to choke someone. That's not a good idea, right? But but then later on you get into a rhythm and a pattern and and you almost I, I think I heard someone say this too, that it helps people stay right in the moment. Because really, you know, 
how much better would we feel in life if we just stayed in the moment a little bit more and not worried about, you know, what bill has to be paid at the end of the month or, or you know, legitimately you have to worry about these things, you know, at least maybe one time a day, but you don't have to focus on it all day long. If you could just get your mind off the things that are troubling you and just stay busy, stay occupied. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to grab a new one. Once I got going on this, which I'm not like really cruising along very quickly right now because I'm talking, but once I got going on this, it became so much easier to, um, you know, just get in a rhythm and just, just bring it out. I want this basket to be, it's going to be about like nine or 10 inches tall, I guess. And I was over, I was trying too hard when it came to adding new, uh, what's the part that you weave around? I call these ones spokes, but I don't know what the part that you weave around. Okay, Rolling Stones in DC, my feet didn't touch the ground. Exciting, scary. Right. True. Okay. Michael says, true. We rarely enjoy life in this moment, worrying about another sad, honestly. It is. It is. Like every, like, let's just be here right now. How about let's just try it just for a minute. Let's just be here right now and say, I'll tell you what's happening right now. I've got a chicken mad at me. <laughs> She's just going to have to find a new place to lay her eggs. Okay. We moved this weekend. Wait here. I left the moment again. But that's okay. It's good stuff. Um, this we got. Uh, we took the potting bench that was behind me off here, and we moved it to the garage. Now it's an extra workbench for my husband. We went to the dump off that the person who lived in the house before left here, uh, paint and stuff like that. But they are absolutely not supposed to leave in your house when you move. So anyway, we were able to get rid of that stuff and some other stuff. But my husband thought he was going to smelt some aluminum. And then he never got around to that project. Second of all, I don't know why he wanted to smelt aluminum. It just seemed like a cool idea at the time, I guess. So he had saved up a bunch of cans. And then he finally said, I'm never going to do it. So he put those all in the recycle bin. And we got that side of the garage cleaned up. And then we were able to pull the dining table here. Let me tip it so you can see. This is the brand new table that we built like two weekends ago. And we were able to move that up to the higher part of the porch and clean up. And now I am sitting on a log. I had these, I had these uh, cedar stumps out in the yard. And so he cut them level. And now I threw a cushion on top and I'm sitting on a stump. We don't have benches. We talked about making benches. And then I said, I would just, I think these stumps look really cool. Let's just use the stumps. So that's where we're at. Okay. That's right. Yeah, I thought of that because because the basket was sitting up here and she kept giving it she kept giving it looks like I wanna I wanna lay an egg in that. So you're right, I think she would. I made some aluminum bullets with my grandfather. Are you what can you do with an aluminum bullet? Can you shoot it? I mean it doesn't have any or did you put did you were you able to stuff it with gunpowder or how, whatever they do with bullets? I don't even know. Oh look. Do you see that bee? <laughs> um, uh, yesterday, I'm trying to make myself less freaked out about bees. Because, you know, everyone, t when you start copying other people and a bee, like, here we go. See, this bee's gonna land on me probably. Okay, there's a bee under the basket. But there she goes. Okay, so um, trying not to scream when bees come around because we're supposed to get bees this year for our, my husband wants to do a beehive. And so we have that, we have all the equipment ready. We just need to order in the bees. And there's a local person who has those bees and we're waiting for him to um, uh, start taking money. EMPs to make sure we don't get info on all the crackdown on the big wigs. Princess, I don't know what you're talking about. You have lost me there. Okay, so. Hey, Glenn. 
A S B S A T lurking. Oh, Apple Stone Pushcraft stuff and things lurking. Hey, woohoo! Yeah, well, I'm actually not the worst weaver because yesterday I was the worst weaver and today I'm getting a lot better. <laughs> I'm actually kind of proud of how it's coming out. Yes, according to how much gunpowder you use, they totally break up on impact. Oh, well. Hmm. Um, did they break? Yeah. She's like, Princess is like, oh, oh, I get you. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. The other thing about leaving baskets outside, they would really age quickly. I wove some yucca mats for out in front of my um, pottery kiln thing. And those started to break down out in the weather. I, I threw them where they were not getting rained on and they they look like they're slowing down in you know, how fast they break down. But this kind of material just will break down very quickly. I have a bunch of it soaking in the, here, let me see if I can turn this. In the horse trough over there, right there. I have a bunch of the uh, wicker soaking in there so that I can grab it and uh, keep it kind of wet. Yep, so I'm doing a two, I'm weaving two at a time here, which is what's giving it that nice. Are you done? That's the one who's mad at me. Sorry, go lay your egg in the coop like everybody else. The uh, Bard Rock, the baby, she was one of the babies. She's become the dominant bird, and everybody's not picking on the gold bird anymore. I like hanging with you guys too. Thanks, Michael. Um, <laughs> these are my buddies. So, um, this is just, it gets, it gets repetitive, but it gets to a point where I can actually think about other things at the same time as doing this. But I can't think too intensely. Earlier, I started to think like, um, about something specific, I started to focus on something like I don't know some some mental task I was doing, counting or something like that, and um, I started to mess up the weave. So it's interesting, like what I'm not peeing, I'm pouring tea. <laughs> um, it's interesting, like what things you can do at the same time as other things, but what things you can't. Like my son can completely do math while he's listening to music, but there's other things you can't do while listening to music, you know. The chick sounded like an incoming missile. Okay, Michael, I'm partial to linotype and wheel weight metal. Never tried aluminum for bullets. Sounds like fun though. Sounds like, be careful, please. I don't know when you start messing with those other metals that are weak, what they're gonna do. Now, copper bullet sounds cool. That's kind of soft, right? But it's, it's less soft than aluminum, I imagine. Silver bullet, that's for werewolves. Um, wooden crosses for vampires. Do you know that there's people who actually, uh, uh, his grandfather wanted to inflict maximum damage to bugglers. I love messing with you guys when you misspell something. I'm sorry. It just happens. And then I'm like, he means burglar is the art. And you got to press harder on the R key. <laughs> Ugh. So anyway, yeah, I, the reason I think that I don't like shooting, like some people really like enjoy shooting and I only like learn to use the gun because I just think it's necessary to know how to do a few things. Um, I don't like it because the idea of hurting somebody really bothers me even, and I know like, okay, there's bad guys. I should, I should like, you, sh you shouldn't like worry about like, Ooh, I don't want to hurt a bad guy. But at the same time, I'm like. I don't know. I mean, the thought of hurting somebody. I don't. I don't like violence, and and it could be my undoing. But I just prefer. I prefer other people to defend me. <laughs> okay, so that's me. I'm a girly. Um. Yeah, she's still she's wandering around looking for a place to put the egg, and I'm just like, okay, okay. Why are we keep talking about this stuff? Full metal jacket bullets do less damage, in my opinion, just treat. Okay, new topic, Michael. That's not being present, thinking about how you're going to shoot somebody in the future. 
we're, we're supposed to be present in the moment right now. <laughs> Does that, is that, now she's looking at me. She's, here, wait, you want to see the chicken? I would only hurt a person in defense of my loved ones. Okay, well, hey. Look at the intruder, intruder alert. Get off the table. Get. 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 Go on. Go that way. Go. <laughs> live action here. Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see my live action with my chicken? <laughs> She's so. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> That stinking bird. Okay, I hope you saw that. <laughs> I couldn't tell if you could see what she's doing, but I do not want her on the table. Thank you. I'm trying to be very even and, and straight, and I'm gonna, you know, even like where it squishes in. I'm really learning it now. I really feel like I am getting somewhere. And, but, oh. Today I was like, well, what is, what's with me that I want to just learn everything? Like, is that normal that, that I just, I mean, I have this sincere drive to go, okay, I don't know how to do that. I, I, I want to know how to do that too. You know, everything pretty much, but it doesn't happen with languages. I don't go, Hey, you know, I want to learn to speak German next week. No, not really. I just want to learn how to make everything. I think like, gosh, wouldn't it be cool if there was a use for this? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I haven't heard anything either about EMPs. That's why I, I don't know what the princess is talking about today. Maybe it's something local to her. Um, so, oh yeah, what was I going to say? Oh, about, about the making of things. Now... My fantasy is that in the future, when there's um, artificial intelligence like doing everything for us and everything is made by machines, that somehow, like people, you know, like my neighbors and my and 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 all the people of the world would highly value handcrafted items, like even if they weren't really perfectly well made, which is my problem. I never really get perfect at anything, but. I would love for um, I would love for people to like just you know really highly value the things so much that you know they're willing to pay a a living wage to a person who makes stuff for a living. I mean that would be ideal. And by a living wage, I mean I don't mean a huge amount of money. I would love I would love to make twenty thousand dollars a year just making stuff. I just don't know how to get there. I haven't got a clue. But I I. I promise to make this stuff if <laughs> that's why when I was in high school and we talked to, we, we would always have a uh, humanities class and, and there would be art, music, history, lit, hush, it's such a pain. And um, I always would hear about these generous benefactors who, and, and I have my own, you know, it's called a husband, but I'd like to contribute too, but at the same time I want to make stuff. So I just never figured out how to make like a living at it. And unfortunately, that's uh, probably everyone's dilemma. Everybody, like even people who, you know, the average person who makes music, they, how can you possibly compete with people who make music who they sell it on CDs? And so music's available to everybody for, you can listen to the same CD for a lifetime for $10. I mean, Right. You know, here's the thing that people say about crafts. They say, why would you make that when you can buy one at the store? I'm not sure if machines can do this yet. I'm, this is a, it's a difficult process with the hands. I'm not sure. But, you know, if machines can knit. Knitting is an extremely complex task. Okay, I got to make sure I'm not grabbing the wrong piece off the ground. I need to add another. These are really long right now.
Yeah, you know, some skills, some skills go away. If, if no one, if no one knows how to do them, some skills will really disappear from the planet. Oh, here we go. That was a little, this one's get, being a little tricky to get in there. Okay. Um, you know, when I look, or if you like search on Pinterest and stuff, the Russian people and their crochet is so high level, so advanced. I think, gosh, I, I hope they are teaching someone this stuff. Because I don't know if you can just recreate that knowledge very easily. Okay, what I just heard from some YouTubers I watch, one is destroying the illusion, commenting on state of affairs, Podesta, secret space program, Saudi princes, etc. Not for this house, not for this happy party. Okay, princess. Oh, okay, okay. So, like that all this stuff is all connected to each other? Is that what you're, I mean, that's what it sounds like you're, you're saying. Um, yep. Don't know. Sometimes like, I think I, I better not focus my energy on, uh, conspiracies because, you know, <laughs> I might find one that's true. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, okay. How many kids would know how to work a dial phone, for example? Oh my gosh. I think the, the rotary phones, hilarious. Rotary phones put a lot of people out of Hang on, I got an issue here. I cross trap decided to go somewhere else. Um, anyway, um, yeah, how do you work a rotary phone? And weren't you always mad at those people who had a zero in their number because you had to go all the way around? <laughs> yeah, um, the rotor, the rotary phone was one of those things that really upset an industry. People, lots of women had jobs as operators. But there's always something else to do, isn't there? It's just... I guess we just, you just have to live in the moment and say, okay, so say you lose your job doing the thing that you've always done because, because the industry went out of business. This happened to my husband. I mean, he used to sell two-way radios. And two-way radios are, I mean, then... Um, Nextel came out with the button that the phone that you just pressed a button and you could communicate to your team like that. And so Nextel, so they were selling those and then cell phones became cheap. And now, I mean, you just don't see that many people with a two way radio anymore. Okay, wait, I want to see what you guys are writing. Hang on. Restless Outdoors. Hello. Thanks for showing up. Uh, I will never take my Easter basket for granted after watching you make this. <laughs> Yes, don't take your Easter basket for granted. But when you um, when you see a basket, somebody really did that. It's incredible, and some of them are very um, complicated and beautiful. And I've seen these. I mean, these African baskets that uh, some people are still making. You know, a lot of stuff is a lot of people. Um, a lot of this dependent on dependence on China for goods. Even this wicker came from China. But the dependence on China for goods, finished goods, has really put people, you know, uh, can we call them aboriginal? Or people from um, uh, you know, the native type peoples, people who still live in the way that the natives did, um, they don't have an industry, maybe, because because it's just cheaper to get plastic. It's, it's easier. It's less time consuming and you have to work fewer hours to buy something that's plastic. And so, I mean, we've destroyed our, uh, we've destroyed ourselves by trying to get something that's cheaper so we could have more and more and more when really what we should want, you know, is one, one really beautiful, unique thing. You know, if more people wanted to, you know, when they, if they said, for Christmas, I want one handmade item, you know, and just say, just put it on your list. One thing that wasn't mass produced. I mean, I think that would, 
make a boon, a boon to the whole industry of people who make things with their hands. I think that should be a goal. Now, I thought it was awesome that when I was at the pottery show recently, not the one down in Green, sadly, which is very near where this whole incident yesterday happened, um, but not that one, but when I was at my pottery festival, I had something that this other lady wanted and her husband had something I wanted, so we were able to swap and I thought, wow, I got something awesome. And she felt the same way. And so, you know, I wish more people wanted something that was handmade. I give gifts that are handmade, and I hope that they are appreciated. I know um, my little next door neighbor, she's, did I tell you guys this? I'm like a, she's like four, four years old. We call her my stalker because she loves to see what I'm doing in the backyard. She will pull up a chair next to the fence and she will watch whatever I'm doing, like chasing the chickens or, or, you know, whatever. Okay. Hang on. Believe it or not, in Ohio, we have men, we have a basket making company called Longaburger. I've heard of them. They're very famous. In fact, the building is shaped in a giant basket. Check it out. I have heard of that. Longaburger. I think those baskets are probably pretty fantastic. I will be looking that up today. Um, I have many that are 40 years old. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, Michael's talking about records here. Okay, he has records with stress cracks. Yeah, so, so music, I mean, musicians, it's hard for a musician to make a living at all now yeah yeah i know you can call them conspiracies but the reason they're called conspiracies that doesn't mean that they're not real at all there definitely have been conspiracies oh glenn has a bake light record not vinyl is it transparent I thought you can see through Bakelite, right? My dad had really old records, and boy, the sound quality was scratchy. <laughs> music, the storing of music has come a very, very long way. Hang on, I have to concentrate for just one second to get back on track here. I have to focus and make sure I was doing this right so I didn't have a... Ha! <laughs> Michael has a large Willie Nelson collection, which is funny because last night I was watching Dudes of Hazard, you know, because it's funny. And um, Willie Nelson's in that Dukes of Hazard movie. Bakelite was a hardened form of rubber that shatters like porcelain. Bakelite, um, Bakelite uh, bracelets, I think. I've heard like people collect those, like, Fancy, fancy antiques. So when I'm getting ready to finish this basket, um, does it, has anyone made baskets? Because I have a question. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to soak this again so I can bend these over. So, you know, to, to do a, make a finished edge. Um, someone figure that out um, before I get there, okay. <laughs> I've got about this far to go. Mm. My throat's feeling a little sore. I don't want to get sick. I, this is my, okay, last, sometime during the past year, I cut um, pieces of yucca and made strips out of it, and I made some tiny baskets. One I mailed to Germany, and Steffi has it. And another one, do you know Steffi, right? Steph, Stephanie Margoth, she's a bushcrafter. Anyway, um, oh, Restless, gotta run. See ya, bye. Thanks for stopping in. Are those the very expensive baskets? The Longa Burger? My mom has a couple of them. Really? Send pictures. Okay, in It's a Wonderful Life, Mary shatters a Bakelite record on the old Victrola. That's how they would shatter. Ooh. So, Mary does that, and I wonder what that record would have been worth today. <laughs> Think about it. It is very satisfying to finish a craft project and then to use it and like make it become part of your life. And um, 
I love other people's crafts too. I have a quilt that's ancient. Well, I have it. It's my husband's really, but at the same time, you know, anything he has is mine, right? So um, his like great grandmother made a quilt and we still use it. Um, it is currently on my couch. Like that's the beauty of these things that are, are made. They, not only that, I mean, it's a, it's got a story with it. It's got a, who made this, um, you know, whose, whose decisions went into, you know, especially when things get weird. I mean, whose decisions factored into the weirdness of, you know, the crafts that are possible. It's a hat. Um, it's, it's really rather awkward. It's, it's kind of like, um, hmm, um, a little bit Star Wars. You know those those white helmets. <laughs> yeah, that's the. Th oh, I messed up. Top one down. Wait, hang on. Okay, so when I have my two here, here's what I did wrong. Like, if I don't do this right, this messes it up. You have to take the one that's on top and pull it straight down and behind the next spoke. Now this one's on top, which is the opposite one. Pull it down and behind the spoke. So I'm just, I'm crisscrossing them each time. Makes it very sturdy, despite the fact that it's only got this wimpy spoke holding it. Um, a project that just takes a couple days is nice. A project that takes an afternoon is also nice. But, you know, the ones that you really put your heart and soul into and when you finish, you're like, now what am I going to do? Those projects are the best. Ooh, is anybody watching? Um, it's one of those BBC, uh, Poldark. Is anybody watching Poldark? I'm watching this uh, with my husband, and it is so good. It's rated PG. Um, it's an excellent period piece. Like, uh, it's just taking up the space that Downton... Sorry, did I whack my mic? Um, it's just taking up the space that Downton Abbey took in my life, so... Okay, I have the story of Treasure Island on 78, my dad used to listen to it as a boy. <gasps> That's so cool. Um, my son and I read that together. Wait, I got to grab another piece. Ping. I threw a bunch on the ground because I knew that I didn't, I'd have to unclip my mic, unravel it for my clothing, and then go over and get it out of the water every time. So I just um, spent a few minutes like preparing before this little this episode of our day here, we're our hangout. Um, Blue Bloods. Oh, okay. Blue Bloods has Tom Selleck, right? Yeah. And in the news, isn't it crazy? All this, all these allegations coming out of Hollywood. In a way, you know, sometimes I, uh, sometimes I like to make fun of the people of Hollywood um, for getting on a bandwagon and and getting uh, all worked up about an issue. But if you think about it, this particular issue, if they finally throw everybody out who's been harassing everybody, and as long as they don't take it too far and say every freaking whack on the butt is harassment, uh, the people who are really bad, if they get rid of those real bad apples in Hollywood, we might end up with a better world for it. That's my goal. That's my idea. You know, like I thought, I thought, why is everybody jumping on the bandwagon? They all of a sudden everyone believes people who have been harassed. Sometimes, you know, it's been pretty bad. Sucked pretty hard. But, you know, maybe it's maybe it's easier to come forward after other people have come forward too, because then you're believed. Um and it's easy to criticize people who took money, you know, to to stay quiet. And they had a lot to lose. So I don't know. I'm not going to criticize any of those people. I'm just going to say we're going to end up with a better world. The more creeps that get, that get known that they're creeps and get thrown out. 
There we go. Binge watching is what keeps me from going kooky. Because binge watching, binge watching isn't kooky at all. No, I'm just kidding. It's really, I guess it's normal. Why has for so long television been a thing? You had to wait once a week to watch your favorite show. And then you had to wait with that cliffhanger. I mean, for a season or like until the, you know, the, you know, months and months and months before you could find out who shot JR. I mean, that stuff used to drive us crazy. And now we can just hit, you know, click and, and head right into the next one. Okay. You shouldn't have to soak to finish the rim. Oh, did you look it up for me? Thank you. Well, we'll see. If it starts snapping, I am totally going to wet it again. Uh, I'm not going to read that out loud, Michael. Okay. Here we go. Well, I met a guy named Bruce Wayne. He lives out here. <laughs> but I think you mean the real one. Okay. I need another one. I have, oh, I almost picked up this one, which is the end of the one I'm using. These things are like 12 feet long. And the worst th mistake, oh, hang on. My stump was sitting on this one. Apple stump. Um, the worst thing about these being 12 feet long is they get a little difficult to manage. But then you don't have to weave in so many ends. And once these spokes get short, it gets a lot easier to just get right through this thing. I can't wait for this to be like a real good-looking, nice basket. <laughs> I mean, after the last incident, which I videotaped, by the way, but, um, you know, some things like, I, I know I published my sound test yesterday and I got a, you know, Stephen didn't like it, but that's because, okay, so some people will be like looking at the comments and go, Stephen said this video sucks. Well, A, the video did suck. And B, I told video, Stephen he sucks like yesterday on Facebook because he showed me a picture of his new car. So he sucks because his new car is super cool. It's like, it's an antique car, but yeah, super cool. So anyway. So that's why we pick on each other, and um, so nobody should get upset that he tells me I suck because I do suck. I don't care, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. So I just I uploaded that, so you know, for me or if anybody wanted to see it, don't feel like you gotta watch all the videos. I mean, some if the, if it, the title doesn't appeal to you, why would you bother? I don't watch everybody's videos. I don't have time. But oh, I subscribe. I have a thousand subscriptions. You think I can watch all of those? People can make videos um, faster than I can watch them. Oh, speaking of which, we're almost an hour in here, and I have only gotten, I haven't gotten very far. Okay. I have to do a cliffhanger at the end. Like make a crashing noise and the screen goes black. What happened? I know, right? You know, I know how to make my videos really popular. Like I'll wear a button down shirt and like right at the end of the video, I'll just start unbuttoning it and then a little screen will go black. Oh no, never mind. But that's what, you know, some people say, put a picture, if your thumbnail picture has your cleavage in it or something, you'll get a lot of views on your video. And I just haven't been willing to go there, you know? Also, I would, you know, be tempted to put fake ones and, you know, make fake, I should paper mache fake, no, never mind. Okay, so wait, hang on. Uh, mm. Apple stump has two apple stumps in the backyard. I sit on one and use the other for some demos. Far starting. Ha! Who did shoot JR? I don't remember. Probably one of his mistresses. Did I just spoil the whole show? <laughs> well, some people have it coming, right? 
Oh my gosh, these things are so long. Seriously, it's still like 12 feet long. Okay. Makes it a little challenging to work with. So you have to kind of shake the tangle out of it. But it doesn't tangle up like yarn because these wicker's a little bit on the stiff side. So thank goodness. I mean, if you tried to weave yarn like this with a 12 foot end on it, well, you'd roll it in a ball and weave it, but whatever. Anyway, hated that show as a kid. <laughs> That place is out here somewhere. I'm sure, I think my husband's been to see it, but I mean, I care little for going for, to that ranch. That's not my idea of a good time. Yeah, I, the funniest, oh my gosh. So one time I said like, look at these beauties or something like that. And um, at the pottery studio, I was like, look at these beauties and I meant, the pottery, I am quite sure somebody took that to mean that there were pictures of babes or something in my video, and I immediately, like immediately, was getting these. <laughs> People are idiots. And mention peeing. Get a lot of get a lot of clicks. This is just the stupidest thing in the entire world. I mean, people can be extreme. Like I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of twelve-year-olds on YouTube, but they can be extremely childish and silly. Uh, just as you mentioned Hollywood, <laughs> she lost her sig signal. Maybe you live really close to the whole uh, NSA building over there. Maybe we shouldn't talk about them. Yeah. I'm probably on a lot of lists, but I don't care. You know why? If, they, if they've got me on a lot of lists, there are a lot more important people that they should be looking at. Because <laughs> I don't do anything. I mean, speed. Well, not usually. Okay. AKA. Okay. Roger that, Michael. Does Roger that mean yes or agreed or what? I was like, who is this Roger guy? Was he right all the time? <laughs> Maybe it's your tinfoil hat. Yes, the tinfoil hats. My son's been running around the house in a tinfoil hat lately. They watched a movie at school, an alien movie, and everyone's, you know, joke. They all got to wear tinfoil hats while they watched the movie. Pretty silly. I like it. I like silly. So today I realized that there's a word called unruly. And the reason why I like to use this kind of material is because it's very ruly. Wait, ruly is not a word, but unruly is a word? That doesn't make any sense at all. Am I right? NSA is right down the road. Well, yeah. You've got a point there, miss. Okay. Okay, well, I'm going to get better at this and not make mistakes one day. I'm currently wondering why I'm doing this. Don't they sell these at the store? <laughs> it was just something that was bugging me. Now, if you follow me on Pinterest, I'm either Silversmith or The Silversmith on Pinterest. And if you follow my Pinterest thing, you can see what I'm currently obsessed with. One is interiors of travel trailers travel trailers built out of cargo uh containers not not cargo not the um not the things the semi trucks drag like the thing you drag the cargo trailer that you drag with like a, a pickup truck or a car um those kind of car cargo trailers apparently are extremely sturdy and people have been building rvs out of them and i think they're so cool and so i am uh I've been saving a bunch of pictures of those. I love cottage style um, interior homes, which always have baskets. And um, I love pottery and, you know, some leather, leather working and stuff like that. I find interesting. I haven't done any leather work recently, but love it. Have all Wilhelm's tools. 
Okay, wait. Someone pulled up to my house yesterday in a three-piece suit wanting to sell meat from his refrigerated truck. It threw me for a loop. I told him I was armed and not interested. In a three-piece suit. I'm here in a three-piece suit selling meat. Sounds legit. Not. That's weird. That is just so odd. I don't understand the people that sell meat from a truck. Is it horse meat? What is it? Why are you selling it from a truck? Do you have a license for that? I mean, I don't know. It sounds pretty creepy. Like, is it stolen meat? Did they, did they, um, did they like seal? Sometimes semi trucks get stolen with all their goods in them. How would they then fence? the stolen goods from the semi-truck. You would have to use, you would either sell it through the back door of a, I don't know, through a mom and pop shop. Is somebody mixing in a little dog meat in there? I don't know. I don't buy meat from the meat truck that comes by. Don't trust it. Don't know about it. Not familiar with that method. People used to all sell stuff. I mean, my dad tells me stories like, you know, the guy would walk down the street with the wagon and with apples on it. And he, at the yells, they all had a different way of bananas. They have a different way of saying the thing. So you'd know when your vendor walked down the street. So you'd know to come out with your money and come get your fresh fruit. That idea is kind of cool, you know, if you live in a city or something. But um, seriously, meat? That is just, yeah. I believe you were armed also. That guy or someone like him has made rounds in our neighborhood several times. Where are they getting this meat from? Is anyone asking to see, you know, a food handler's certificate? Has that meat been handled by, I mean, who are, you know, if we were in Venezuela and you really don't ask questions about where the meat came from, I'd understand it. But in this country, we have pretty strict regulations on the food handling. Has it been refrigerated the, old, the whole time? How old is it really? Has it been frozen and thawed? And I mean, what? I don't, you don't even know. What does the packaging look like? Who's the company? I just, so many questions. I'm creeped out. Okay, princess, I'll see ya. Um, I'm gonna get off too because it is 102. We've been on for an hour and that's enough of your day to be stuck with me. And this thing is coming along here. I'll give you a, give you a view of it before we go. See, the bottom started out a little bit shaky. But who's gonna see that anyway? It's gonna sit like this. And maybe I'll get handles on it, I don't know. But, ah, it's poking me in the face. Okay, so I'm going to take off too. Um, good to, what? Julie, maybe they are the ones doing the cattle mutilations. That's where me, those were definitely aliens. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, guys. Bye. Will it hold water? No, it will not hold water. People have eaten 10,000-year-old uh, mammal meat from the tundra. Okay, that's disgusting. Um, you think it might have had a little freezer burn? Just a little? Yeah, I'm not interested. Oh, old mammoth. That's disgusting. Okay, I'll catch y'all later. Um, uh, bye. Good to see y'all.